So, Rashard Amos transfers from Colorado after committing to Colorado, after leaving, I think it was Miami, Ohio, he was playing for, he had over a thousand yards last year. But after committing to Arizona, I think Arizona or Arizona State as well, then he commits to Colorado, then he commits to Ole Miss. Look, we wish you nothing but the best, uh, uh, Richard. We hope you become spectacular in the football world. But I already did a video being fair to you, my God. I did a video. I don't know which one of these videos getting dropped in first. I did a video being mature and you know how them grown adults who don't hold you little dudes for no accountability. They leave him alone. Quit bashing the kid. Even though this nigga is a grown ass man. He's grown as hell, but they're going to say leave him alone. Not on this video. I'm going to speak nothing but truth. Like, I'll do videos speaking as you as the athlete, but let's have a man-to-man -man conversation, Richard Amos. You feel me? Because at the end of the day, this is deeper than football. It's bigger than football. It's bigger than football. It's deeper than football. We don't even have to say no Diddy. We're going to say no Richard, and I'm going to tell you why. We've seen all these transfers leaving Colorado. You've seen the Dylan Edwards run into state. Kansas State, that is. You've seen Alton McNo skills, McCass skills, run into state. Arizona, Arizona State, that is. You see Savion ran away to state, too. We ain't talking prison. We talking Georgia State. You feel me? You've seen three running backs who cowered away when Charlie Offerdahl was given that scholarship. When Charlie Offerdahl worked hard last year and this year in camps in spring and earned the number two running back position, them dudes got scared. I'm going to do a flip on these videos that you ain't never seen before on the other videos. Let's go deeper, bro. I feel a lot of you niggas don't want to work hard in life. I'm going to say it, bro. A lot of you niggas got a professional victim mentality. You were told that the oppressor oppressed you so bad that Everything got to be given to you niggas. Mayo Nation got to come on their knees for you niggas and, 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 and let you know it's going to be okay. So you run towards that direction. But you seen Dion. You seen a brother that looked like you. So it was supposed to be a handout. Dion was supposed to feel sorry for you because you a brother. You a melanated brother and you've been through the hardships of life and you're the only one with this story like the rest of us niggas don't go through the same thing. But we supposed to look away and, and pamper you. You know, like Alton make no skill in his father telling the world that my son has to be the number one running back. The audacity that you saying your son has to be the run, number one running back. And then here come Charlie Coward Edwards who was scared to let Dion know he's leaving and still hasn't spoke to Dion. Him and his dad orchestrated a move to leave once they knew Ohio State transfer. You feel me? Mr. Dallin Hayden coming to the woodwork and he's bigger than a, 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 a coward Edwards. Then they heard about that, that freshman coming into town. Brandon Hood, incoming freshman, about to, ooh. So Charlie, Brandon, and Dallin done scared the other running backs away. But none of you bloggers want to say, shut up. First of all, I'm going to stop saying none of y'all. There's some real bloggers out there. There's ones who do clickbaits. There's ones who never show their face. But to them ones who stand there in the fire like me and us in our community, the ones who, no disrespect to Dion, because it's not us riding for Dion, because this is bigger than football. It's deeper than football. It's about us, bro. How are we going to treat the collective, the protection of collection, when it come to us, bro? And I'll be watching, bro. All you Negro mites and from the Negrumps nation, bro, we seen y'all, bro. We know who the step and fetching is. We know who the ones who done sold out a long time ago. But then you got the Rashard Amos. Boy, you've been flip-flopping since you opened your mouth. What nigga could take you serious, bro? It's one thing to transfer. Everybody's entitled to that. I even spoke up for you, my guy. I did another video. It's one thing to transfer. It's another thing to be tap dancing. April 16th, you give a commitment to one school. April 26th, I mean, uh, April 11th, you give it to one school. April 16th, you leave that commitment, you commit to Colorado. Then, a month later and some change, you do an announcement. I would like to announce I'm decommitted from Colorado. I would like to commit to Mississippi. Some of y'all going to say he did it for the money. 
No, nah, that's too easy, bro. If that's the case, that means he went to Colorado for the money too. So I'm not going with that analogy because number one, I think every college athlete of any ethnicity, creed, I don't care what walks of life you come from, you deserve to get paid. I don't get mad at that part. So we not bailing you guys out. I'm going to go deeper on Rashard since you've been a coward. Fifth different commitments and announcement. Boy, you ain't committed to nothing. Bro, I doubt it you committed to your girl who probably getting ran through by a couple of niggas in the football team. You heard I said it, gang. The way you move in life, you got to have PTSD from girl being tripped on and jumped on. Now, let's get to you. I can smell the bullshit from some of you niggas, bro. You can smell it through the screen, bro. You... Didn't want to hold that grounds of being a melanated brother, being coached by a melanated man. Nah, I'm going to go deeper, bro. You niggas and most of y'all who run away from the Dylan Coward Edwards, out to make no skill. You know, his dad, you feel me, since his dad's some thug-ass nigga, the only dudes his dad respect is the ones that he put his head down towards, just like Dylan and his father. You know, the father knows Dion, and because you know Dion, you feel like, Nah, this like my brother, my nigga, my uncle coaching. I don't feel comfortable because you was never comfortable with your own dad in position in life. You wasn't comfortable with your mama when you went to the grocery stores with her. You seen them white moms and their kids and you put your head down, boy. We got a condition of coddled football players who feel uncomfortable when they're around Mayo Nation so they only can work for Mayo Nation because they've seen what... It looked like to be melanated, and they not cool with it. These are dudes who look in the mirror and not even feeling proud to be who they are as kings. The only way they can feel that is if a Mayo Nation personnel, such as the staff, the institution, to tell them you're number one. You can't have Deion Sanders telling them number one. It will remind them of their dads. They seen their dads jump. At how high, sir? Jump house high as to the mountains. They seen their daddies and mommies jumping for Mayo Nations all day life. So Rashard couldn't hold this package and baggage of being in them rounds, of holding this position of being a melanated brother that changed the power five, the power six, all that nastiness that's been going on. Through the circumstances of football and what we know. So they don't want to be the ones to change things because they think it's going to stop their NFL dreams. They're going to be blackballed. They're going to be ridiculed. And dare I say, they don't want to be called, oh, they're too militant. Or they love their group of people way too much because they know there's a connotation that comes with that. And they know you literally get blackballed through everything standing up for people who look like you. And they ain't ready for that. They some step and fetches and they going to be that. Then you got the jealousy. They look at Dion, so they're getting phone calls from their dads, prior coaches and all that. You see Dion over there. He got that Mayo boy, uh, Charlie Offerdahl, to start, and they got jealous of Charlie, bro. I'm going to say it. Dylan Edwards seen Charlie be rewarded, bro. They, you got weak cowards like Gavin Claude, who's now talking down on Shador and all that. He's really mad and transferred because he's a walk-on type of a player who never got that full scholarship or whatever he needed. So he was suffering. See, damn, they gave Charlie the juice? What about me? One of these type of dudes. But let's stick back to Melanated Brothers, Rashard. Uh-huh. The coward, Dylan Edwards. The no skill. The no skill at all. Alton Mick. Caskill, you feel me? Let's go talk about Savion. You feel me? I'm not trying to disrespect Savion. He wasn't disrespectful like the rest. But nonetheless, all you dudes transferred once you find out the package coming in. You let a little freshman running back? You let Brian Hood scare you dudes away? You seen that big thoroughbred running back coming from Ohio State? You feel me? And Dallin Hayward and the rooms got the shaking. You feel me? Earthquake heard around the Power 5 football, bruh. And you dudes was feeling like you can't compete. Just like Uncle Neely said, bruh. You dudes are scared of competition, man. And Alton, his dad already was hollering. So I, I see Dylan and Alton congratulating each other. That's a fake friendship. Because according to Alton's dad, he's saying his son should have been number one. So Dylan, didn't you leave because you said you want to be the primary back? So we got two diva running backs who both left because they need to be the one in, number one running back. And all of a sudden when they both leave, they're liking each other. Other, but y'all left for the same reason. Shouldn't y'all be mad at each other? But that's the thing here. Everything get deflected towards Coach Prime, bro. You can't tell me about the cap I see going on. It's a lot of rap cap in these institutions, and a lot of you folks get passes over there. You see this Boulder thing? Deion Sanders could get fired today 
As long as he get fired for the right reasons, because, hey, Rick George, I rock with you. But if Dion gets fired for some biased BS reasons, I, I, I'm going to go ham on you. But right now, if y'all have to get Dion, uh, get rid of Dion Sanders for football standards and football reasons, I stand with Colorado still. I'm going to still support Dion. It's, if it ends acclimably, why we could just talk ish on Colorado? No, we're not going to do that, bro. I've always remained thorough and I don't pick sides based on race, based on motive, when it's just football things being made. When the media is just talking about the football aspects of things and being fair to everybody, I, I let it be what it is and we get regular news. But when we got to turn up on these step and fetchings or extra mayo and no sandwich situations, don't expect me to sugarcoat like your favorite blogger do. Most of y'all favorite bloggers who cover Colorado, they hide their face. I'm the one who got to get the death. Oh, we ain't gonna talk. We'll, we'll talk about that on the separate videos since these thugs who play football want to come at me. No wonder you can't make it on the football field. You still want to be Pookie and Ray Ray down the street, down the block. Mama being turned out and tricked out all through that street. This is what you love. So take your ass back to the block. Y'all ain't ready for this lifestyle, bruh. You not. To the Rashard Amos, bruh, I, I can't call you a sellout because you was never committed to nothing in your whole life. Your family didn't commit to you the way they were supposed to, so now you got trauma. You used to not committing to people the right way and then breaking commitments. I don't think Prime and them should have wanted somebody like you. Were you good enough to play for us? Hell yeah. You ran for over a thousand yards. I don't care what nobody says. That's hard as hell to accomplish, so I'm not no hater. It's just that... When you smell the BS, bro, like, I don't care if Ole Miss gave him more money or this. He ain't left for that, bro. You can, you guys can pretend if you want to, but Richard Amos, you a $2 stripper on the pole. And we're going to do the next video about that. You dancing for them dollars, bro. You nothing but a glorified prostitute on Fifth Street, bro. Now, get the fuck out of my face, bro. I got a $2 to make you holler. Holler if you hear me.